What's going on everybody, it's Alfredino here and we're back with another game review for you guys today. What we're going to be going over is the game Skull and Bones that was actually blessed by Ubisoft to play for six hours on the closed beta and have a little bit of fun uh, along the way and got to do a little bit of uh, analysis on it. So first with Skull and Bones, it is a action adventure slash shooter, I guess you would say a naval shooter type of game especially because you are a pirate that are doing battles in the sea and also doing plunders where you're actually doing battles on land too, which I will go further into later in this video. The game was announced at the Game Awards of 2023, if you guys remember seeing that. What I wanna go over is the objective of the game, the gameplay loop, the combat system, a few pros and cons um, at the end of the video. The objective of the game is becoming the best pirate by arming a ship, having the best crew, also the best items and materials in the game. So when it comes to becoming the best pirate in the game, adding materials, building your ships, building, upgrading your cannons as well. You can have different types of cannons. You can even have like arrows. You can have bombardment cannons. It is insane to play but you can't simply just buy your ship you also have to find these materials and have enough materials to build your ship going into the gameplay loop is basically having quests grabbing materials from completing those quests or from just doing side quests or just venturing out in the world and then doing upgrades like your ships and your weapons basically your crew as well the way that the game has everything set up for getting your materials is when you play a quest it will actually show what materials you need and if you actually pull up your map you will see what the materials look like and the locations for it actually reminds me of far cry 4 i believe when you're trying to get certain items they already showed the location on the map which is a great idea so you're not just wandering around aimlessly trying to figure out where these materials that where you can farm them also what i like to add into the game is that it also is pvp and pve now when it comes to the pve it is really cool because i was actually able to hang out with my friend spark and we were able to do a whole bunch of quests together and everything which we'll go further into that segment too now when it comes to upgrading your cannons ships things of that nature you have to have the blueprint which you can either get from doing a mission or you can get it by uh shopping at different vendors on areas of the map once you're able to get those blueprints then you'll finally be able to get the materials to build your ship or your cannons. So when it comes to the gameplay loop, it seems fairly simple, nothing confusing, nothing crazy about it. So I think it's pretty solid. Now going into the combat systems. So when it comes to combat, there are two types of combat, ship to ship, or I guess you would say sea battle. Then there's also ship to land, sea to land battles where it is plunder. When it comes to the ship to ship battles, you can either have a choice of destroying the ship itself, or what you can do is if you damage it, good enough you can actually board the ship and steal materials off the ship and then destroy the ship which is pretty cool now when it comes to the ship to land it's more of the characters or your crew goes on the land and starts taking items from the land itself but you're still on the ship and you have to attack other ships uh, to defend your crew that is on land and the way by defending is basically destroying other structures that are there supporting that land or any ships that are coming in. Now, the thing is, when playing this game, if you potentially die with cargo on your ship, you will lose that cargo, but you can get that stuff back. If you remember the location exactly where you died, you'll be able to grab it. Now, the thing is, if there is another player that is in the game, they're able to take that stuff as well. So be careful of what you have on your ship. Now I wanna go into the pros and cons of the game. This is from what I've seen only the six hours of me playing it. I was streaming it on Twitch and also I was streaming it on YouTube as well. The audio was messed up, so I apologize for that. If you guys do wanna check out the VODs, you guys totally can. I'll have them linked down below. Going off with the cons first, I just wanna say this. I always wanna start off bad and then end up on the good note. When it comes to being only on the land when you're able to walk around, venture around, it's only if you're doing a, a purchase or you're doing a treasure hunt. There's not actually a battle that you're able to do or like any type of combat while you're on land. The only time 
when you're able to do combat is if you're on sea or if there's a plunder which basically it's only your ai i guess you would say going on the land and and taking what they need to take and all it is is just a meter that fills up as long as you are defending the land against ships and other structures then the meter goes up it's almost like having domination i guess you would say on call of duty sorry for the call of duty reference but that's what it seems like now when you play plunder or if you're actually doing like a battle with another ship that has the arrows the arrows seem a little too accurate because even if you are just hauling away from the area and they're shooting arrows the arrows seem to always hit your ship and they cause a lot of damage earlier when i was talking about playing with my friend spark when we were joining his missions and, and his worlds the thing is as a addition to his server or to his world i'm not able to do any upgrades i'm not able to do any quests that he's on as well so i'm not sure if doing those quests and completing those quests also help me as well or will i have to go back into my own world when i leave his party and have to do those quests myself now the pros enough on the good note the map in the game is so flipping huge and i like how when you have to discover things it will uncover like it will unfold on the map but then there'll still be some blurry spots around it that you haven't discovered yet i actually like that when you're looking for specific materials there is it is labeled on the map of where that material could be at so all you have to do is just go around that area and then once you get into that vicinity of the of that material it will tell you either to harvest it or to mine it things of that nature which is awesome the ship controls if you have played sea of thieves or any games like that the controls are fairly simple at first it is a little confusing of trying to get the ship to go fast to pick up some speed or to slow it down or just completely like just stop the ship it is confusing but give it like about 10 minutes and then you'll you'll be fine also another great thing speaking with the map itself is having the ability to fast travel you can either set sail and just explore the sea yourself or what you could do is you can fast travel but the thing is you have to pay a fee like i think it was 280 silver or something like that or gold to actually fast travel from one port to another now the thing is you have to be at a port you can't just be in the middle of the sea and then saying hey i want to fast travel it doesn't work like that you have to be at an establishment to go to another establishment for fast travel another thing i do want to say uh, it's just like a bonus, I guess you say, for the con, but it's just me personally. They gave us six hours to play the game, review it, do recordings of it, uh, streams as well. The downside is when they gave us those six hours, a lot of people misinterpret that the six hours was only for like that day, not for the whole time of playing the beta, because for the closed beta, it was from it was the whole weekend. So we thought, hey, we have six hours on Friday, six hours on Saturday, six hours on Sunday. Nope, it was six hours for the whole beta itself which was kind of heartbreaking because everybody was enjoying it. A lot of people were having fun getting into the game. They're really starting to feel it. But by the time that happened, the beta just cuts them out. On another big pro, I will say this as well. Since I gave that big con, I give another big pro. This game is coming out in February of 2024. So it's going to be around the corner. And this game with everything that you could do is you can make a lot, a lot of content. Those that are new to streaming, new to YouTube and don't know what to play, or if they have played Sea of Thieves and they really like that game and they really want to try something new that is kind of like Sea of Thieves, play this game. You will make a lot of content off of it, like getting the best ship early, crew, clothing, anything of that nature, or to try to see how fast you can beat the game, I guess you would say. It seems really awesome to, to play. Like I said, there's gonna be a VOD posted down below. So make sure to check that out if you want to. The audio is messed up. I do apologize again, but uh, yeah, that is it guys. That is my, my takes on the game. I know I got a few other videos I gotta do and I do apologize not posting a lot. Just been doing a lot of other stuff as well, including school and doing other stuff. So sorry for that. But I will see you guys next time when I post another video for you guys, all right? I'll see you guys later. You guys are amazing. Love you guys. Peace.